Shall we start? Mm -hmm. Great. Yeah. Uh, hi, everybody. Um, a Saturday afternoon. So um, today we have the student visit uh, with Hong Kong artist Chan Kakyu. Hi, Kakyu. Can wait to everybody. Uh, and today we have on um, our uh, moderators um, who are Amy and also Asia, our participants of the 2020 Parasite um, workshops for arts um, professionals. So before we start, uh, Amy and Asia, do you want to introduce yourself? Sure. Um, kia ora tato. My name is Amy and I'm an art writer and curator based in Tamaki Makoto in Aotearoa, New Zealand. Uh, hey everyone, thanks for joining. Um, my name is Asia. Um, right now I'm living uh, on unceded Coast Salish territories, also known as Vancouver, BC, Canada. Um, I am an arts worker uh, and a, a, a curator as well, and I am currently um, co-running a DIY art space called Ground Flower Art Center and uh, have my hands in a few different other uh, projects as well. And uh, our artist uh, currently in your studio, right? Yes. Lovely. Yes. Go on. You have to say a few words. <laughs> oh, sure. uh, hello, I'm Chen Ka Kiyu. I'm in my studio in Hong Kong. Yes. Yes. <laughs> So yeah, um, I'll leave the space for you guys to start. And uh, for everybody, uh, if you have any questions, um, the artists and also moderators are open to the idea to um, have you ask questions throughout the talk. So don't be shy to unmute yourself. Uh, or you can also leave the questions in the chat box and uh, the moderators will help uh, read those questions. Kaku, did you have some works that you you want to show us and maybe you could talk about? Oh, yeah, do you want me to start by the... Wait, let me start. My screen share. Can you guys see? Yeah. Okay, cool. Should we start by the, uh, the first graduation work? Yeah, sure. It's the audio of Paul. Can you also hear? Are you going to miss your mom? No. No? <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't cry. Are you? <laughs> Shadow.
I don't know if you've ever experienced this, but looking back at your older works, it's like so embarrassing <laughs> sometimes. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, just an FYI to everyone, I think we're going to just like show some brief clips of um, Kaku's work just so everyone can familiarize themselves with it and then we'll speak a little bit about that. Um, and yeah, uh, Kaku, if you wouldn't mind maybe like talking also a little bit about yourself and giving a little bit of your background and then also the context for, yeah, this uh, graduation piece that you made. Um. For, I, I have a pretty simple childhood, pretty much like everyone else, I guess. Just in the in the period of time where uh, everyone is trying to get away from Hong Kong because like it's being returned to China after after the UK's govern, uh, government. And um, so my parents moved to Canada and like give birth to me and like came back right after. So I have another passport that I can leave anytime I want. <laughs> That's that, that was their plan. And then I basically grew up in Hong Kong and um, like everyone else here. So in a very traditional um, Catholic school, like uh, a girl's school with, um, with nuns as teachers sometimes. <laughs> and uh, I, and then I went into the Chinese University of Hong Kong, and now I'm studying in a, a School of Creative Media in City U, and um, that's pretty much how I got into art. It's 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 kind of an accident. <laughs> I I chosen. Uh, uh, it wasn't like uh, I aimed to be an artist since I was small. It's just like when I was choosing what subjects should I be studying in the university. Um, I thought about like um, what's what's my hobby or what do I like doing, and then the only have a uh, hobby I kept throughout my uh, adolescence childhood is like painting, drawing, and then I thought like uh, painting is art, so that that's that's what I should get into, and so I realized that art is like so much more than just painting and drawing. After I got into university, it's like so ooh, everything, literally everything, and then. And then uh, got me there, and then I tried to like express myself more in this um, form. It's like easier than talking. <laughs> talking makes me nervous. <laughs> yeah. Listen, am I talking too fast? Because I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> <laughs> um, when we talked previously, you kind of mentioned that you started experimenting with video works about halfway through your degree. Mm -hmm. uh, can you talk a bit about that change? Oh yeah. Um, actually, um, this this is a little bit about my childhood too. So I grew up with cable TV, like iCable TV. So there's the um, movie channels where they you now nowadays you can like choose whatever you want to watch on Netflix and watch from the beginning to the end. But like when I was small, uh, the cable TV shows movies twenty four seven. And then you, when you got into one channel, then you're like in the middle of a movie. And then you just cut from the middle to like some point that you have to, that maybe your parents asked you to turn off your TV. So you just get, get like one certain part of the movie. And like maybe, maybe like after three, four times, you finally get the whole picture. But then that, that training gave me an ability to understand a movie in like three minutes <laughs> to, to basically grasp the whole, uh, kind of the whole story plot. And um, uh, the videos kind of came from there, like how to, how to take pieces from different places and merge them into, manipulate them <laughs> into what I need. And like also adding another, another layer for um, the story I wrote. Yeah. yeah, and yeah, I think that makes a lot of sense, like knowing that about uh, sort of this like um, fragmented uh, conception of like media, because like obviously in like that format, like follows in a lot of uh, your practice mm -hmm. um, throughout your media work. Um, and like when I watch it, for example, like there's all these, I feel like there's like all these assumptions that like the folks that are viewing it are like going to recognize and like 
have certain associations with particular media media clips and like when like you see it and you like recognize something um then you're like oh like I get it like it feels sort of like you're part of like this inside joke with you and like um yeah because there's just like it's just like so loaded with all these cultural references um and yeah I guess I'm like wondering like when you like pick these media clips um do you like pick them with the intention like knowing that like different audiences are going to like have associations and like be able to um, like connect with those actually uh, um one of my concerns about my artwork is that only people in hong kong can connect with it or or have more connections with it because a lot of them is like very local culture things some random YouTube videos that um, that only Hong Kong people would have seen it or like uh, Hong Kong movie clips, Hong Kong songs, those sort of things. But um, mm, that's, that's still a, a question I'm asking myself. Like, do, do I want to include like, or be a more um, international, uh, what, how do I say that? Have a wider eyes kind of like that. Yeah, but um, I think people who have seen the videos would definitely have recall something that 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 story they recall or that whole video they recall add another layer to the, the story itself. And also kind of like um, nowadays we scroll Facebook and Instagram, it's like always like short videos. And you, you, you get things from fragments like you learn things from fragments. It's not like deep understanding of things most mostly. So I that 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 is kind of like also how mm, how do you say it? Mm, how how we we've learned to understand things. Like I'm trying yeah, to sort of like that short attention span. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's also one of the the thing in my head when I'm making my artwork. Sorry, would it be too noisy outside? Because it's an industrial building? Should I put my on? Yeah, maybe if I say Should we move on to the next work? Sure. So this is in other ex at the first exhibition I did after my graduation. It's, it's for K11 and um, it's a residency program for a month with two Chinese artists coming to Hong Kong and then we kind of show them around Hong Kong and like we go to uh, Guangzhou together for a little bit of site visits. And then we had a exhibition together, but it's more like divided into four um, small, small solos. Can I say that? <laughs> four little area, and we, we we each manipulate our own area. So this is the uh, this is the artworks in that exhibition. Can you maybe and talk want... about? Okay. Sorry. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Um, can you maybe talk a bit about the environment that you have created within the installation? Like, did you have yeah. a certain experience in mind when you created this for the audience? Oh, for uh, in my undergrads, I also I always have a fantasy. Like, I wanted to make an exhibition in a space with a huge window with a lot of natural lights and like so refreshing uh, sunlight. And then, um, but but then in the first exhibition I did, the the space is very enclosed and, and um, it's it's um, there isn't any windows in it. So the first thing I thought about is to make a huge window of my own. So I had this. Uh, sunrise and sunset video. Maybe I can show you a bit really quickly. 
So there's no sound in it, and um, it's like a sun coming up and then going out really quickly. Are you showing a uh, video? Because we're still on your website. Oh, really? Sorry. Uh, how can I fix that? Yes, it's working now. Yeah. And um, I wanted to make an uh, kind of so the, you see, look at me there, right? So you only see the the words when you're looking at it. So I I, I was kind of like so unconfident that I wanted to make an order that people would have already followed it when they have uh, when they when they heard it or seen it so whenever they see look at me they're already looking at this <laughs> then it goes back down yeah And is the other video that you had, that that one about um, sending you PayPal money, oh. <laughs> is that also part of it as well? <laughs> yes, uh, yeah, th that's another part of the exhibition here. <laughs> Come feed me. I, I, I was just really desperate and really broke. <laughs> I have a donation box there in the exhibition and people actually give me money like change in their pocket. <laughs> I feel like everyone who is like exiting slash in art school can really relate to that. <laughs> That's brilliant um, artists. <laughs> yeah, totally. Um, yeah, I'm just like curious. Can you like speak a little bit more about like your relationship with being an artist? Uh, yeah, I think I think for a lot of artists is a is a love hate relationship. You like having the platform to be a version of yourself that you want to be, or talk about versions of things that you want to. It's like you can be a very manipulative person being an artist in your artworks, I mean. But then, but then when you're the, um, the person in charge of everything, it's like uh, a huge hit of your self-esteem when you fail to actually carry out your plan or like fail to survive as, as who you want it to be. Um, it's, it's more... Um, it's more mentally tired than actually um, uh, physically being broke. Like the the the, the bigger the, the bigger problem is that you're you're mentally exhausted for being um, frustrated about money than you are like actually broke. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and and also like whenever you whenever you have. Um, made an artwork that you think you haven't actually achieved what you wanted to is like such it's a huge it's a huge stroke like, like a punch on your face 
that sort of thing. But also, but also it's like the same when you've made something you like, like made something that you can actually appreciate and feel better after making it. Yeah, I think it's a, it's so a lot. So do you feel like this idea of failure is a recurring idea within your practice or like trying to confront this <laughs> idea of failure? Failure, I don't, mm. I guess, I guess it's more like um, I, I take myself as a comedian so I can laugh at myself. So um, it's, it's, maybe it's about failure, maybe you're right. I don't know. But it's a, it's a self-mocking makes a comfort me. <laughs> yeah, just laughing about it makes it easier, I think. Yeah, sense. totally. <laughs> I really like your self, <laughs> your uh, self-deprecating humor. I feel like you can really like sense that like sarcasm throughout your work, and it's just sort of like, yeah, you can like it. I feel like it has like so many layers because it's like well, at first it's like really funny, but then it's also like oh, but also kind of sad. <laughs> and then, yeah, yeah, I'm trying very hard to be. Um, funny and sad at the same time. <laughs> it, it's it's cool. interesting how much, how much stand-up, I watch a lot of stand-up comedies and how much stand-up comedians like talk about their therapy or like their meeting with their therapist in the, in the show. It's like so sad, but like so funny at the same time. I love those. <laughs> Yeah, totally. Very relatable. Um, shall we work? Shall we work our way to um, post flu syndrome? Oh yeah. Ah, uh, sorry, I'm not good with my computer. Okay, so this is a show I worked with uh, Wu Jiaru. She was. Uh, and uh, I made this video. Do you want to see the whole video or should I just play parts of it? I think parts of it are fine. Yeah. Okay. And we can talk about the work as well. Okay. So, Haikam, Nijang, Joy Hau, yes, they get low gum, then to pie to tang oi. Yo Yan Wang, we need to yin go da low gum yik mew. 等你身體訓練出抗體,那你今年的流感高峰期就可以幸免於難。我覺得流感病毒對人類充滿愛同關懷,它是宇宙帶給我們的啟示,還你知,孩子,你攰啦,你需要休息。強壯的人不會病,病了也不會死,因為他們夠強壯。So um, Asia and I were talking about this work because it really intrigued us in terms of the current global situation. Did you want to talk about that briefly? Oh, yeah. Um, I, I made this artwork after I got the flu <laughs> and I stayed home for like six days in a row, just laying on the sofa with my very comfortable blanket, watching Netflix all day like doing nothing literally and like not feeling guilty at all. And um, in that period of time, I, I feel like um, I, it's, it's like a fir first time in a long time, I feel good doing nothing at all. Because I don't know if you feel the same because do not doing anything, it's pretty guilty. Like being lazy is a guilty thing. And it's only when you're sick or you're, you're like being forced at home like now, that you have the excuse to not do anything. 
And I think it's like, it's like a gift for me that flew. <laughs> so I can take a break for my, from my life, literally. Like you, you don't have to answer anyone because you're sick. And then you don't have to go to work. You don't have to think about art. Yeah. Do you still feel the same way amidst like COVID? Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, like in the first of 20, uh, because of Hong Kong, we have the outbreak a little earlier. So it's like in the first half year of the uh, of 2020, I, I, I did so much less than I should have. <laughs> yeah, and, but it's not as legitimate as like you were sick because I didn't actually get the COVID virus and so I, I wasn't the person who had the legit uh, excuse to be away from everything but but the part that um, everyone is preventing of going out and then you actually zoom friends that's like also in Hong Kong it's it's it's, it's quite nice I think going out kind of gives me I don't know it's still so hard to go out for me I'm so lazy <laughs> Because I have, the, I, I have a horrible problem of being late. I'm like a horrible person in like timekeeping. So it's, a, it's great. Like you have to, it soon helps me to deal with everything so much easier, like home officing and stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah, it was like really funny watching that work because like knowing that it was like made in 2017, is that right? Yeah. Um, and then like watching it now and like reading the messages that you have in there which is like like it like becomes like much more sinister because it's like you I think you have a quote in there that's like strong people won't get sick and if they do they don't die because like they're strong enough <laughs> and like um yeah other things like what's better than chilling at home and doing nothing it's like yeah, yeah these are like such like universal things that we're like all hearing now I feel like like and I'm talking about all the time so it's but just like it's bad it's like worse now because like um i mean worse in the sense that i feel i feel very mean having said that um as strong people don't get sick and sick uh, and even if they're sick they don't die because people actually die <laughs> in this um from this virus it's, it's kind of a meaner meaner but still true thing to say i guess it's just really mean. I'm just a really mean person, maybe. Um, we have a question from the audience from Jan. Um, and Jan is asking, most comedians play for an audience. Do you have an audience in mind? Oh, that, that's a good question. Um, I think the first audience I'm aiming at is myself. So self-centered, I'm sorry. But uh, I, I wish it's it's like the you're you're always your first audience, and um, I think the person I'm the person I'm telling the joke to in my head is myself. So I try to please myself first, and then I know if I can please other people as well. Though I have a very low standard, I find a lot of things very funny. <laughs> but uh, yeah. I also try to make my artworks not so hard for non non artists or like people not in the art circle too hard to understand. I think it's pretty comprehensive and and there are different things you can get from it. Um, I think I um, both Amy and I were also speaking earlier about like sort of your themes. Um, that reoccur in your work, um, which also like surfaced in this video in particular, um, when you speak about like the virus um, being like a land of love and it's like full of love and care to mankind. And like uh, also in your graduation work, you said like sadness is lovable. Um, and yeah, like in a lot of these works, it just like makes me also like recall this like, uh, or like a feeling of like, a parasitic relationship that like basically like yeah drains you of all of your like energy and your health and like this notion of like love being like contested and like um 
but also like finding it in like a weird place or something Mm -hmm. um and yeah I guess just wondering like if you can speak more about like the themes of love actually um, this has been a question in my head for for a long time as well like Am I like Taylor Swift or something? Why am I always just talking about love? <laughs> uh, but but then actually, it's, I think it's because this year we've stayed home longer, so I have more time to think or leave leave a blank space for me to think more. I I realize that by talking about or what is love or like by asking about it, I was actually asking what is real because like love being kind of the most important or like the most, um, the biggest feeling or the, the best feeling, emotion that people have. Uh, it's, it's, mm, it's a way to this, to, to how do I say? like by, by talking about, by asking about what is love, I'm asking about what is real and that's because um, it's it's hard to understand if things is real or not and it's a very how do you say, it's a very direct relation in my head about love and realness i think because it's it is supposed to be the most real feeling or the most uphold feeling the most important feeling and then, and then if you don't know if, if this feeling is real or not, how do you know if other things is real or not? It's something like that, if it makes sense. I try to talk about this with my other friends that not everyone understand. So feel free to ask me if I haven't put myself or put my words out well enough. <laughs> I'm so bad at talking, I'm sorry. Wait, and we have some more questions coming through on the chat now. And there's one from Parasite, from Angie, I think. Um, are you performing a persona or is the comedian your real self? And I kind of had a question about that too, like, because your works seem quite confessional. Mm. Like, is the narrator yourself? Or is she As what, it, a, a combination of other people? Yeah, that, that's also a good question. It's, um, I think it's part of myself that I think a lot of people have like sometimes when you read or when you watch a movie that really touches you it's because you can relate to it and you think someone has put out your feelings or you what you've experienced in in a nicer way in, in nicer words in nicer um yeah it's like it's like they, they have to talk about the things better than you could have and I try to, because I'm not very good at talking, so I try to um, make the, the narrator of my videos a little bit more awkward, I think, in with her words, with his or her words, and being kind of emotionless, trying to, emotionlessly funny, kind of. That's why I don't want to find a real person to, to, to give the narration of my videos. Yeah, not a real narrator, but like computer generated voice. So it's more inhuman, but then you can, you can fit in your emotions yourself. Like the less emotion the narrator have, the more emotions you can, the more kinds of emotions you can fit into the video. That's what I think. And then I also see another question. By real, do you mean sincere? No, I think by real, I mean real. Like, is this real kind of real? Because it's like the Matrix story, like, we, we have a lot of question about, so are we actually virtual beings or actual beings? By real, I mean actual, yeah, I think. At the same time though, I feel like 
um, your work does a lot to like sort of bridge that uh, sense of realness because it's like you're sort of like inserting like this digital space into like the real like the physicality of the environment because like you work in a lot of installations so it's like you, you're like sort of like forced to approach like this media work as like an actual object which yeah, I wanted to also speak about in the next work that you show, because maybe that will make more sense when, when, when we view that and see the installation that it's in. But yeah, like, I think your work does a lot to like contest the idea of realness. Thank you. Should, should I be showing another work? Yeah, yeah. Work. yeah. Which one is coming next? Let me see. Is it, is it this one? you were talking about yeah so this is the set yo go yet yet hoi chi to jo hai ni ke yen liu ni de ke sang ming mo fa zai fen li to jo hai ni ke quan shi jie yi ni ye hai to ke quan shi jie sui yan ni wu zhi dao to ai ni di me ye Dan 你比他的純潔無瑕深深感吸引<笑> 但就是因為什麼都不懂他那種新的眼睛帶了你看一個新的世界。所以他一定是最好的可以的話你想每一刻都留在他身邊 Maybe I'll stop here. This one is a little bit longer. This is an artwork I did for um, Women Festival last year. And um, the, the first thing that comes up to my mind is like female as mothers, because for very obvious reasons. <laughs> and um, uh, the original idea was to make is to write a love story that is very ambiguous. Like you, you couldn't tell if it's a love story if I'm tell, talking about a couple or talking about a, a parent and child. And um, because I think if you put how 
Mm. If you put how a, a mother would have been to their, the, the love from a mother to the child into a relationship, like you, put, you do the same kind of actions or have the same mindsets, it's like hor kind of horrible. I don't know if you agree or not, <laughs> but uh, that's what I thought. And it's, I, th I think a lot about how to be a good parent, not that I want to be one, but I think it's just the hardest job in the world. It's like so, so hard to be a good parent and so hard to, so much responsibility to raise a child of your own. And, and how do you, how should you stand and how should you, um, mm, how should you set your mind to, and how should you love the person you gave birth to and not manipulating him or her or not um, forcing too much on him or her or giving too much love. Love can be too much too, right? And um, yeah, this was the question I'm constantly thinking about and I kind of want to like ask everyone for what they're thinking and through the video, although no one gave me feedback, but <laughs> as a question thrown out, yeah, waiting for a response to come. <laughs> Yeah, maybe can you also talk a little bit about the actual installation of it? Ah, um, the way to install my my works is always very intuitive. Or like, it just came up to my mind when I'm like writing the story or like organizing the the video clips, cutting the videos because I spend a huge amount of time cutting my videos, and like in in that process. The, the form of it, the setting of it came came up itself throughout the process. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, I'm not sure if everyone could see, but uh, you view the work through the bassinet. Um, uh, this one? Yeah, it's in a baby bed. This was pretty straightforward, actually. Talking about a story about a mother, and then you put the video in a baby basket, it's like... <laughs> I, I was afraid it make too much sense. <laughs> like, too direct. But I think this could be kind of cute. Um, I was interested in what you were saying about when you're cutting the videos together, how you sort of allow the work to take on like a life of its own or to draw in other meanings that you might not originally have intended. Is that kind of process something you employ throughout your practice? Um, sorry, can we ask you please? Can, can, can you ask again sorry and then the internet yeah, sure. um, you were talking about um the kind the kinds of meanings that come out of your work when you're cutting the video together mm -hmm. i was just interested like whether Oh, I guess this is more of an observation that you're allowing the work to sort of generate its own meaning. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. Originally intended. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I hope I kind of like let like when when the idea first came up, it's more ambiguous, like a direction of of a story, and then and then I keep. Like the process of my artwork is I, usually I don't have a draft or anything. I just keep thinking about the idea and then until an actual story come up and I can like write freely, like nonstop for the whole thing. And then, and then after, after the story, I recall what videos have I seen before and could have fit into the story. And then I just like go with the flow of how how things, yeah, could be. I think I see some more questions. Yeah, there's one I think from Midori. So, 
uh, they say that uh, I like your video, it's very relatable. In the video, you inserted a lot of religious figures. May I know more about how the Catholic background of your secondary school affected you? Mm -hmm. And then they also add, because um, many schools in Hong Kong are established with religious backgrounds, for example, Buddhist, Christianity, Catholic, etc. Yeah, and um, uh, I think Catholic images fascinates me, or like religious images fascinates me. It's like so pretty like whenever you go to europe first thing you have to go with like the the biggest church in every city you go that you visit like the most important landmark that you must be must be location right and um, the the I, I like how they organize things i think a lot of people would be attracted to how religious places organize the things with the altar or like um the aesthetics of it but actually who who caught me in this uh catholic catholic feeling or like uh catholic aesthetics is like uh, it's the photographer robert mapplethorpe patty smith ex-boyfriend uh, uh in in his in his bdsm photos or like even his in his flower photos he used a lot of um uh, Catholic composition and it makes me feel how how um, how a holy image can actually actually be so sexy at the same time. <laughs> like the holy composition is like so constrained and then oh it's so rousing at the same time. Yeah. Um, it, it's more it's like um, when you're trying to lose weight, you forbid yourself from eating junk food. And then the more you forbid yourself, the more you want to eat junk food. Like for, yeah. The more you forbid yourself from, from um, worldly feelings, like um, worldly temptations, the more, the more tempting the things are, I think. Did I answer the question? Is that the question? Yeah, I think, I think so. Kind of, yeah. Maybe we could have a look at your next work because I think it talks about this idea of desire as well. Mm -hmm. uh, screen. Okay. Oh, and one last question from the audience. Was this a commissioned work? Ah, um, which one do you mean? <laughs> uh, yummy, one, gummy. Oh, yummy, gummy. Oh yeah, yeah. That one is the. It's a. Is it called commission work? I, I think so. That they paid artist fee and artist, uh, and material fee. Is that called commissioned? Um. Oh, I can explain my question a little more because I was curious. Um, um. I was curious uh, if there were a theme given to to the artist to oh. create this work or like to like. Um, like ask artists what's a response to this curatorial theme or because I know I saw actually your work at, uh, it was the Women Festival right mm -hmm. so I want to know more about the background oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so the curator is K.Y. Wong and then um, she actually just asked us all like to have to have an afternoon tea together and then told us about the exhibition and then she just said kind of like uh, you can do anything you like just about women it's fine yeah. <laughs> Anything about women, anything related, yeah, so, pretty minded. So kind of commissioned. So then, uh, so this is like a new work, kind of uh, responding to this idea. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Like your experience as a mm -hmm. woman, or imagining the roles women play um, mm -hmm. in life. I see. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's it. Lovely. I have more questions, but go go ahead with. <laughs> first okay i feel like i've been talking for so long you should <laughs> that's the point <laughs> okay uh what's the next one is it this one yeah, yeah. This one? oh this one is a show i did for parasite and um it's in art basel last year and we have this whole space um 
uh, renovated with tiles, toilet tiles, kind of. And then mm, we have this lady giving out flyers, but she took it back when people were trying to take it. The, the flyers on the floor is like how many times people try to take it. I'm interested to know if this work responded directly to the context of Art Basel. Oh. Yes, being like quite a commercial space, something where like yeah. the transactional nature of art is mm. quite explicit. Because this artwork has been in my head for a long time and I haven't had a, a, a perfect occasion to show it, I think. Because in, mm. in normal gallery shows, it the context the same performance would, would have meant less in a normal gallery show, I think, with less uh, people walking around. It's like a booth is like a perfect place to give out flyers, I think. So it's an actual experience I had when I was, um, it was like peak hour, I rock, walk through a very narrow pedestrian walk and like there's tons of people walking, like everyone's sticking to everyone like that and then a boy it's uh in the side of the uh, on the road and like giving out flyers and then no one was taking it uh, and then i saw him from from a few like i saw him and then i was trying to uh, be kind and wanted to take it from him but then he couldn't respond to it like he didn't think anyone would have take his flyers and he took it back from me like we had a moment of like pulling this flyer and then he took it. Yeah, so I, that, that moment stays in my head for a long time. And I really wanted to recreate the moment and how it had struck me kind of. And that's, that, that's a perfect occasion to show it. What's on the flyer? Uh, I have to wait a second. I have to share screen again. On the flyer is, uh, you know how I feel, I'm feeling good. Repetition is meditation. And then I was trying to um, promote this um, repeating movement that, that eventually you can shut your brain off and just do the action. Because I think in that moment, the boy giving the flyer wasn't thinking about anything with the flyer like his head his mind has nothing to do with the flyer it's just a action he keeps doing that like kind of meditates like kind of in a state of a meditation yeah oh and then um, would you like yeah uh would you like to get us through the rest of uh, uh, that exhibition sure and then let's um it's a video about a guy to give a good massage. This is actually the same lady giving up fire. And then I had another story about um, a lady, an OL working in Central, trying to find someone to hook up and then at last and end up having a massage and being more satisfied than, than she, she, have, she would have expected. She 
就唔會再覺得寂寞。但今日佢好想要有另一個人去捉摸佢，講佢知佢喺度，可能係因為公司冷氣太凍。亦可能係因為晏晝食嗰碗米線太辣，佢覺得個身中間好空，好想要一啲温柔同埋一啲安慰。佢以為嗰杯熱奶茶會温暖到佢，但冇。所以喺中環放工之後，佢行向蘭桂坊。想揾个地方饮一杯，顺便揾一个都渴望温柔嘅人填满自己。其实佢唔系想要性欢愉，只系想揾一个人揽下，或者揽住佢瞓下。或者珍惜地摸下佢，但边度会有个人愿意无啦啦俾个真正嘅拥抱你 ？Free hug， 男来少少你都唔好意思啦。所以结论系搵个人扑嘢可能。诶、hey? ，How do I stop？ That's pretty much the whole. Um, the whole experience. Ah, and also those set of photos. Can you see? <laughs> There's a total of six of them. I I have to share the screen again. I I I. And um, it's taken in an old motel in Hong Kong that's abandoned. This these photos were actually just my website's background. <laughs> I I use it to um. Feel like as backgrounds here, but then、um, the curator in Parasite she really likes it. Chu Chang she really likes it, and then she suggested me to print them out and frame them nicely so I can show them. Because I don't didn't consider myself as a photographer, but but、um, I think it's nice she have suggested that, and ha- maybe I would try more on photography works too. See more questions. Yes,、yeah, someone is wondering if the that the if the rest of your show is related to the action,、uh, that action you described between you and the person handing out the flower that inspired、mm. that performance. I think maybe the whole show it's about、mm, interaction between strangers. Or like connections between people not too familiar with each other. Yeah, intimacy, but in, with strangers, like hookups, like massage. You you open yourself to total strangers. And in the sense, yeah. But 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 that's、uh, how I have concluded. How、uh, we have concluded after we we we've chosen everything and put them together. Because some of them is new work. Some of the massage piece I was it's like in work in progress when we've decided to do the show, and then、uh, and then some older works like the motel photos, and then a video about me touching a. A toilet. It's an older work,、yeah. and also the、um, I think the blue video is also was also in it. But、um, I I don't know if you like massage. Do you like massages? Do you like、yes. massages? Are amazing. <laughs> yeah, because I think it's it's a very good way to.、Um, To teach you how to appreciate yourself, and like feel good about your body, because everyone is like always so tired and so tense, and like when you're massaged, when someone 
touches you so with so much care and like so comfortably you feel like you can appreciate yourself more kind of <laughs> yeah yeah for sure um gwen also has a comment and question they say hi i actually saw this work at art basil and I'm curious about the performative aspect of the work. Is this something that could be translated if inst installed in a gallery? Or the context would change if it wasn't installed at an event with a substantial foot traffic like uh, Art Basel? Also, I wish I took a flyer. <laughs> um, uh, I can't really picture how this work would be except on the opening night for the gallery for gallery show actually um because without like tons of people walking past and like like you you the booth the the area the artwork is in their eyes but they didn't see it actually the ladies here they pass by without actually seeing her like that that's kind of important for this performance i think and if if in a gallery show, um, like except on the opening night, like visitor comes to see every single piece of the work, and they would have look at the artwork one by one, but not like yeah. So it's it would be very different, and I can't really picture how to show it. Maybe as um, as a video recorded of the performance, but not actual performance. Um, I'm interested to know, like, how your works respond to the urban landscape, I guess specifically of Hong Kong, because I guess these ideas of isolation or loneliness or these encounters with strangers, they're kind of compounded in urban metropolises. Like, is that something you think about with your work? Mm. I think, I think every artist think about a lot about loneliness because it's a really important thing that it's a it's a really important thing for everyone. It give, gives you weight for your existence, I think. It's part of human nature to feel lonely, I guess, because because we're surrounded by so much people, so much things all the time. And whenever it's quiet, you just you just mm, the loneliness just can strike you really hard, strike you really hard, and um, and in Chinese, there's like two different ways you can translate loneliness, like zhe mo and gu uh, dong, and it's two very different things. Maybe kind of like loneliness and solitude, and mm -hmm. it's two very different things, I guess. Do you have a better way to translate it? I don't know. <laughs> and I, I think it's solitude. And that that's that's how how you how you um, can live with live with yourself. How how you can co uh, talk to yourself, communicate with yourself, and and feel the weight of your existence actually existing i don't know i don't i don't know why do i feel so much so it's like existing and loneliness is like so related together mm -hmm. but yeah i think it's very important that we take a good look at it oh no my, my macbook is going i uh, that's a really low i have to go grab the charger really quick give me a second <laughs> okay um I'm just looking at the clock and we've been talking for about an hour now. So maybe we could open it up to the audience for more questions. And if anyone did have a question to ask, feel free to add your video to the chat and ask the artist directly if you, if you want, or if you're too shy, feel free to ask a question through the chat.
Akio, I actually have questions for you. Hey. Because I was, you know, going through um, the projects and some of the shows or installations I've been um, working on this year. Um, I was actually trying to look for uh, a clue or uh, like something that might connect all the projects together. But after hearing everything, um, maybe this is my comment or my observation. I feel like you are trying to um, find or uh, narrate this uh, relationship, even like between you and yourself or you with um, strangers or um, yeah, it's really about people's connection or this untold, um, which is really like dif difficult to describe this. Um, um, I don't know. Please try because I'm also asking the same question. Yeah. Like, what's the thread between all my artworks? I can't see the thread except my daily life experience. <laughs> there, there is some like. Um, important things I think I've been seeing through, uh, like um, you care about um, like what we call love or like this important human emotion and uh, your identity um, as uh, a woman, even you didn't really um, say that loud or like mm. explicitly, but um, it's always uh, in your work. And uh, definitely your Hong Kong identity, um, but also this um, distance between people, which I also feel strongly uh, when I'm in Hong Kong. So, <laughs> well, it's not really a question, but yeah. I also okay. just wanna see if um, you can develop more or like w w what's your struggles or um, any thoughts you've been thinking about like this thread? Cause I think that would be really important to an artist. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, because we also want to feel like, oh, with this work, um, maybe this is Kakios because this is the thread route for practice. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, this is a great uh, question, kind of, quite, kind of quest. Uh, I don't know how to. This is a great thing to talk about, and uh, I'm always like jealous about people who can like do five year PhD program about the same topic and like digging really deep into something and having a really uh, a, having really knowledgeable background for a certain topic like that 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 identity or that that hard work makes me jealous because I'm like always jumping from things to things and like um, maybe sometimes like walking too fast like literally walking too fast in 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 daily life <laughs> and uh, uh, sometimes it's I think I should slow down more to to take a good look at myself and this period of time is actually a great time to 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 reflect on my art practice that's that's how I got like that's kind of the threat is like the realness of existing like actually existing or not for the like how to feel more real like i don't know if you guys have this feeling before but it's um sometimes a lot of things feel very ambiguous and like abstract and like you you can't tell if it's there actual or not because I've maybe because I've really bad memory, I can't recall things well. I can't tell stories in details unless I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm making up a story. <laughs> and uh, this this bad memory kind of um, kind of makes me doubt if something has happened. Sometimes I can't recall if that things I, that's the thing that actually happened or was that a dream yeah so um, i have difficulties making sure that things are real and um yeah but that that is kind of one of the th thing um, not not specifically talked about in my art practice but i think that by discussing so much events of daily lives or like encounters of daily lives it, 
kind of helps me prove that some part of history I have experienced is was there. Because I think you are a really real person, not only. Uh, <laughs> Thank you for proving. Yeah, <laughs> also in your work, uh, very honest, very mm -hmm. deep and straightforward. Even I see the struggles, like you using uh, uh, like the computer to tell the stories. I don't know, maybe because of a concern or from more um, artistic choices, but um, I mean, still behind that action, you want you, I feel I feel the the vibe you're trying to be really authentic, um, authentic, uh, like thank you about yourself. But also um, at the same time, I, I feel the risk because if you want to be real, uh, it's it makes everything very vulnerable at the same time. Ooh. So I don't know. Maybe we can have a separate discussion <laughs> later. <laughs> um, yeah, just just some thoughts I have. Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you. Wait, I see a new question, I think. Thank you for feeling relatable to my artwork. I, sometimes I just want to want to want to make people less lonely when i'm making art is it yeah so thank you for feeling relatable cheetah is that how to pronounce your name there's one thing i want to talk about i'm annoyed by um like normally shy people they're really quiet but I think I'm like shy and like noisy at the same time, like loudly shy. <laughs> that, that, that's, a, that's a personality that annoys me in the, a lot. Yeah. Oh, I kind of want to get rid of it, but, but I don't know how. <laughs> Brace yourself, there's no way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I think everybody has their own like, you know, characteristic struggles. I also have to. <laughs> uh, do you have more questions from the audience? Or from Aisha, Amy? We've asked a lot of questions already. I think that's it? Yeah? Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, everybody, if you enjoy uh, today's talk, uh, you can um, definitely follow Kakio's uh, uh, works, her social media to check out what is happening next. And also the recording of today's video will also be uploaded to Parasite's YouTube channel. So you can go back and re you know, um, refer to uh, what's being discussed today. And well, thank you so much, Kakeo. Thank you, Amy and Asia for the moderation. Um, and thank everyone you everyone for coming. Yeah, thanks everyone. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you everybody. Have a good weekend. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye.